Hello and welcome. This is our week eight assignment for operations management, looking at operation management principles applied to a current or former employer. This is Elijah B. Smith for MGMT 5575 for Dr. Mark Grant. Today, we will be taking a look at Bayberry Garden, a hospitality restaurant located in Providence, Rhode Island, focusing on creating a positive guest experience, good food, and good memories for guests. As compared to a typical service or product development company, this restaurant is producing a service as is uh, customary with most hospitality ventures and not necessarily a physical product itself that can be measured or quantified. The customer base is local adults between the age of 25 and 65 in the local area of Providence and the greater surrounding areas in Rhode Island. The average cost per person for a daily meal is around $75, including beverages and food costs. And the average guest count per night is around 125, and that is just inclusive of weekends, weekday averages. However, if both services are included, that being a brunch service and a dinner service, this count can be up to 500. Looking to the design of goods and services, Bayberry Garden is using an approach that is focusing on guest experience providing the guest with as satisfactory of an experience as possible. And since this is a restaurant with no defined products that are set in stone, the experience is currently modular and allows guests to expand and tailor their experience to whatever they desire, allowing for an extremely unique experience to be taken by the part of the guests. Limitations are put in place on the menu, such as not being able to order outside of the confines of certain restrictions, example being only being able to order oysters in sets of six or 12, instead of being able to order them piecemeal, say one, five, two, or seven, which would disrupt the flow of service. Limitations like this are set in the design of the service so that menus and the combinations, therefore, that are given to the servers and thus given to the kitchen are not able to be overly complicated more than necessary. This operation has standardized the steps of service and the training period is quite extensive. This training period goes through many phases and is quite long compared to other restaurants. This aims to produce the most qualified and effective staff possible so that guests' needs are able to be met properly and any scenario can be met and answered by that person due to that extensive training. Looking to enhancements of the design of service for this restaurant, a more seamless integration of technology would be highly beneficial. There are many, many technologies that exist for restaurant workers to be able to use in order to facilitate the ordering process or the drink ordering process or the check counting process or the tip roll process. Many software technologies exist and this would help provide for a more seamless flow of service, allowing for less time to be taken on the part of the employees, freeing them up to focus on guests' needs. This integration of technology would also provide a more seamless productivity and more efficient working conditions for the staff. What generally occurs in a fine dining establishment is extremely, extremely low volume. However, where that low volume makes up for is high costs on the part of the customers. So this low productivity could be sped up in a sense, by integrating more technology so that the work that is being done manually by the service workers are able to be automated. Looking at cost reduction recommendations, 
it's very, very apparent that improving existing experiences for guests is going to be what this operation should focus on. Small changes are what's going to be the most beneficial to impact the guest experience. Looking at that moment of truth, when the rubber hits the road, the server, bartender, or any service member is interacting with the guest, that is the point at which the focus should be. These interactions are what helps build a resilient customer base. And this resilient customer base is what keeps you coming back to the restaurant. It's what keeps customers coming back through the door, allowing them to spend more money and almost in a sense, guaranteeing revenue for the operation. The better that servers, bartenders, or anyone in the service sector in the restaurant can provide guest experience, the better that they can do, the more guaranteed revenue they have in the future. And in the opposite sort of vein, if they lose a customer, that is a lost revenue. So it would be in the best interest to provide guests with the best experience right at that moment of truth. A happy guest who is treated well is certain to come back for more and spend more money knowing that they have been fostered in a hospitable environment. Designing jobs to be easily modular is also a great way to be able to reduce the strain and fatigue of having multiple workers in the operation. It can get a bit cramped if there are exact positions doing only certain things that cannot be done by other positions. Creating positions that are able to adapt or easily uh, or easily make staff issues um, apparent due to the fact that only one person or a few people can be doing this job is quite apparent. Now, looking into managing quality. Proper staff training ensures that guests are receiving the optimal experience. You'll see as a trend in this presentation, staff training is key. Now, nonverbal and verbal communication set a precedent, precedent on how guests should be experiencing the operation, how they should be experiencing their food. Verb, these two forms of communication are key in providing the guests with the greatest experience they can. Guest needs should be anticipated before that the guest even knows what they should be anticipating, in a sense. Providing guidelines and establishing SOPs for how workers should be interacting with guests helps manage the quality as the product in this situation is a service and is customer experience. So the best way that a server can provide the best guest experience is to be the most attentive and the most consistent with their communication. This communication goes for the entire restaurant, not just guest facing operations. If constant communication is kept with the kitchen, making sure that all customized orders, allergies, and aversions are properly noted, this makes sure that there is as little margin for error as possible, making sure that guests needs are met. Now, an enhancement recommendation is, again, based on the employees, making sure that the employees are well taken care of, making sure that their strain is as low as possible, um, and putting an emphasis on team-based working environments makes the operation more beneficial and running more smoothly. An unmotivated and overworked employee will not be able to be as effective as one of the opposite category. Allowing other team-based workers to step in that are not always guest-facing as much as the servers or bartenders, such as maitre d', managers, owners, and chefs, would help facilitate this process as well, keeping that team-based working environment. Also providing guests with consistency, make sure that everyone is treated equally and that all guests are, in essence, treated like VIPs. Now, a way to be able to reduce costs in managing quality would be 
again, employee training. Extensive training in how the menu is operated, how allergens and customizations are possible, as well as emphasizing communication as the most important part to this equation, keeps the amount of food wasted low, making sure that guests' needs are met and quality is at the highest it can be. Wasted food is wasted money, and if a server or worker can be properly trained to take as little or as few wrong orders as possible, the least amount of money will be wasted in the long run. A layout strategy model is used by almost any restaurant, and that's the same layout model we're gonna see here. It's a process-oriented layout strategy. Every position has a general area away from the guests where they can perform their duties that are outside of their guest facing roles. For the maitre d', it's the host stand. For the servers, it's their service area and corridor. For the bartenders, it's their back bar. This area, this layout, provides stations allowing the restaurant to be modular. Every station of the restaurant performs a slightly different task which provides for an overall ease and flexibility of service as a whole, providing more flexibility and efficiency. Looking at a recommendation to this idea, since each station needs different equipment, it would be beneficial to centralize inventory so that the storage area would be more accessible for all of these stations to be able to restock whatever items they need. Some items for production are located in distant parts of the building, which would be difficult to gather in the height of a service. So centralizing inventory in this layout model would make it easier at those peak times of guest service to be able to retrieve inventory items and replenish their needs. This ties into inventory, but is centrally based on layout. Re this reduces the distance traveled, making for faster efficiency, which ties into cost reduction. The fewer amount of steps that a worker has to take, the more efficient that they are, and the faster that they can get back to a guest and perform their service needs to be able to make sure that they are getting the most optimal experience possible. Then we move on to our process and capacity strategy. Process and capacity strategy is going to be looking at the process strategy itself. Every position has a general area where they are able to be provided with a tailored guest experience. Pardon me. Each guest is able to be provided with a guest experience that is tailored to them and not predetermined. The process strategy that's being used here is highly modular with low quantity, and high customization, similar to one seen in a hospital or other restaurants. There's a heavy reliance on the availability of software and technology, so an enhancement would easily be providing more upfront and updated software to make the highly customized process a little bit more streamlined. Due to the low volume, every guest is important. Every guest cannot be forgotten. So using software to help tailor the guest experience lifts some of the burden off of the workers. I'll give an example specific to this operation. There exists a menu item known as let us cook for you, which instead of having the guests order their entire dinner experience from appetizers to dessert, it is on the servers to create a tailored guest experience for them based on certain aversions and allergies. An automated system would be able to create this tailored menu for the guests 
using a certain set of frameworks, taking into consideration their aversions and allergies. This would help streamline this process. Looking to cost reduction, improving the station and menu cross utilization of input products would decrease the need to order multiple types of products or different products entirely. Cross utilization is a very effective way for restaurants to reduce costs. And we'll see later in inventory analysis that cost utilization can be very beneficial in reducing costs in multiple aspects of the operation. Incorporating a simplified offering list to guests would change the experience without changing the process strategy while also reducing costs. Reducing the menu size is essentially what this boils down to. The fewer items that you have to retrieve and allow within the restaurant, the higher cross utilization there is, the more that the guest is able to experience and the fewer ingredients that the restaurant is going to have to purchase. This all comes down to how creative the operation can be with their processes. And as we, as we move on to human resources and job design, lots of aspects of job design are present currently. Job expansion is present because many roles expand and overlap with other basic responsibilities and tasks. All roles have to set up and break down their stations, and most front of house workers have a couple of shared responsibilities that they must complete sweeping, cleaning, wiping, folding napkins, making sure that areas in the restaurant are tied, tidy, making sure that menus are in the right places. No matter what the role is, there are some aspects that overlap with others. This is some job expansion. And while all service workers are expected to participate in service, everyone at some base knowledge is required to be able to interact with guests at some basic level. Job significance is also present. Every person in the operation is vital to making the operation flow seamlessly. Every person is essential. And making sure that every person knows that they are essential keeps workers coming back. It helps fill in a physiological need for those service workers, which is there. It's, it's incorporated into the approach used by this restaurant. Now, an enhancement recommendation would look at incorporating more feedback for managers. The more feedback that's available, the better job that a worker can do in the future, providing for better guest experience, more repeat customers, and more guaranteed revenue. It causes a bit of a snowball effect. Feedback helps improve the overall service and guest satisfaction. And, in, and it also helps enhance guest experiences when interacting um, with the workers of the service team. Now, a cost reduction tip or recommendation that the restaurant could use would be providing for more job enrichment, which may provide cost reducing effects for the managers and the higher ups for the operation because it allows a single worker to take on the breadth and roles of say one or two or perhaps three workers depending on how enriched the job is say a maitre d that can also help bus tables or help bring drinks or pour drinks or provide some basic elements of service would help reduce the burden on the overall staff, but also may be able to help fill in in some staffing lacking issues that may end up presenting themselves in the future that would require more than one person to be taking the role. Having one person that is trained on multiple positions that are useful to the restaurant ends up being a beneficial long run cost reducing recommendation because it allows for one person to do the job of multiple, saving money in the long run. The last principle that will be identified today is inventory management. 
We're looking at work in process inventory being used. Raw products are not being brought in because they would be too time consuming to be able to process from raw to WIP to then being usable. Rather, semi-processed products, otherwise known as WIP inventory, are brought in to be created, or rather brought in to be used to create finished products that end up on the menu. Just-in-time ordering is a method that is used by most operations, especially this one, because as a culinary operation, food is perishable, and an ordering manager will only want to purchase what is necessary to be able to fulfill guest needs based on a predetermined forecast. This applies to non-food items as well, because inventory space is vital. It cannot be taken up with by unnecessary inventories. So non-food items such as napkins or wine are only ordered when they're needed so that space is not being used when not necessary. Looking at an enhancement for this would be hard to lock down because a revolving menu is being used and thus inventory items are not always stagnant. They're changing and the list is not able to be fully analyzed using something like an ABC analysis and then a cycle counting system. However, using an electronic software to be able to record keep would allow the operation to more efficiently manage inventory to make sure that the correct amounts of items are being ordered at the right time. Tying into this revolving menu would be something that ties into chef creativity. Utilizing unused or unwanted inventory items that perhaps are about to expire or have been left over from a menu item that is no longer on the menu, using chef creativity to be able to provide menu items and create special menu items helps provide a more streamlined use for these excess inventory items so that they are not going to waste, as again, wasted product is wasted revenue. Cross-utilization also provides an effective way to keep inventory items to a minimum. The more effective and creative ways that you're able to use the same inventory item, the same input for multiple items on your menu, the more flexible you're able to be with your inventory and the less you have to purchase. If you are able to have a strong relationship with your supplier, you may even be able to get a discount on such a large quantity of the same item. Now, now finally, looking at the conclusions that can be drawn from this analysis, it's really just nuances that we're looking at to change. The flow of the operation is already fairly apparent and fairly solid. Many principles of the operation are well incorporated into how the service is running. Operations management is well incorporated into the restaurant already. However, it is overwhelmingly shown that this operation benefits from the employees and how they're trained, which is why that more effort and time should be placed on how these workers are being trained to make sure that they are providing the most optimal experience for guests, to make sure that the fluidity of service is the best that it can be. This is how the restaurant will continue to thrive in the future. And for only being two years old, it is extremely surprising to see this level of efficiency, this level of potential. If they are able to work on these nuanced changes and create a system for enhanced employee training, the restaurant will be able to drive costs in the long run continually down and excel in popularity in the future, bringing profits and revenue up. Thank you very much. Please see the work cited for any details used in this presentation. And thank you very much for your time.